Planning Council. Good Wednesday morning, Jonesboro. This is meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 102.5 FM weather. It'll be partly to mostly sunny in the low 70s today. Clouds will increase tonight, a weather front coming in late tonight and tomorrow with a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Overnight temperature 50 to 55. Clouds and showers and a few thunderstorms Thursday, the high in the mid-60s. Showers and thunderstorms Thursday night, and then partly to mostly sunny skies Friday, a high in the low 70s. Your life, your music, we're KLEK, 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News, I'm Natalie Powell with your latest world news. Southeast Asian country Brunei has introduced the death penalty in new anti-LGBT laws, which have sparked international condemnation. The EU is said to be considering the UK's announcement that it will seek another Brexit deadline delay. And South Korea has revealed it's been detaining a ship believed to have violated UN sanctions by trading with North Korea. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kobila Jones, and my special guest today, as you know, is the first Wednesday of the month, so it is Chief Rick Elliott from the Jonesboro Police Department. Good morning, Chief. And good morning, everyone. All right, so we thank you for joining us. Um, and if you missed Bible study, you missed a treat. Chief joined Reverend Greg Ota for Bible study this morning. So um, you can go back and catch that video on YouTube or on our Facebook channel. So but without further ado, we're going to get right into our topic for today. All right. The officers in Jonesboro <clears throat> have been very, very busy in the month of March. So we're just going to dive right into okay. There's been some great things and there are unfortunate things as well. So. Sure. Um, as always, we're going to tackle some of the heavier stuff first and okay. lead up to the light. Um, you all have been making a lot of arrests. Right. Uh, the street crimes unit have really been on the prowl, literally, right. uh, cleaning up the streets. And I know you can't go into details about all the cases, but tell us how um, you get some of your... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? The the in, the intel <laughs> how do you get the how do you know who to hit like are, are these people that you've been watching for a while you just know their well, activity a, you know <laughs> can't lay everything out there but it, it's a combination of information and uh, that uh, we get from the people okay uh, from the citizens uh, it's then uh, you know just <clears throat> we look at criminal activity uh, in the hot spot areas and people that's causing problems and uh, so yeah we get intel from various okay. sources and then we take that and then run an investigation on it and then the end result is a bust and I just want to let people know like and this is this comes from my research reading you know I read more than Facebook I read the news right other news articles and um, also with the classes I've taken um, Officer, just because it seems that the just because it seems the police department is not doing anything, they actually are working behind the scenes quietly, and so some people get a little too comfortable and relaxed in their activities and right. think that well they haven't caught me yet, so I can yeah. keep sliding and skating and then start that then there would be that one moment then bam we pop up on the then scene. They get popped, yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Yes, it's a, don't get too comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's we, we try to take a proactive approach uh, t to policing in Jonesboro. Uh, you can't just be reactive, which means just handle the calls alone. Uh, we have to do our job and uh, you know try to suppress crime and, and criminal activities, you know, the best we can. And the best way we start to accomplish this was bringing the street crimes unit back. And once they're out there and doing what they do day in and day out, it, it has made a difference. It has made people that are involved in the drug culture, you know, they're a little bit more leery about what they do and how they do it. Okay. And um, so, you know, they're making several arrests every week and seizing a lot of illegal drugs off our streets. And 
So they're doing what they're designed to do. Okay. And if you would like to stay on top of what's happening with the Jonesboro Police Department, you can check out their Facebook page. Um, you have a wonderful team, um, social media <clears throat> team. I did. Uh, you know, as we talked about in the past show, uh, recently hired Sally Smith. Uh, she's a civilian, but she's our public information specialist. And... Uh, she handles the day-to-day -day, uh, input with the media, getting reports out on the media. I also hired a young lady named Rachel Carmack, who uh, I call my digital media specialist. Okay. And she has uh, brought back to life our Facebook and uh, all those posts that you see on it with the pictures and things like that. That's, that's her responsibility. Okay. And uh, so between the, those two and then Sergeant Waterworth, they all work in the same office. Uh, they've keep this information out there <clears throat> as you said earlier there's a lot of things the police department does that you know you just never see in the news or the newspaper so i felt it's important that you know we promote our ourselves and, and toot our own horn because the men and women of this department do a lot of things great things every day and most of it goes unrecognized yes, sir. so i thought you know it, we need to put this this information out there uh, if nobody else is going to do it for us, we'll take care and do it ourselves. Right. So we have brought back our Facebook, and so if you're involved in Facebook, we ask you to, to go to it and uh, click on it and follow us on Facebook because anything that goes on in Jonesboro, it's going to show up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if, the, if the news, if, if the news media, you know, if, when they're wanting information now, they're, they're going to our Facebook to get it. So it's up to the media. And the public, if you want information firsthand on what the PD's doing, you can go straight to our Facebook. And on any critical incident, uh, somebody out of that public information office will be there on scene getting information from okay. command and feeding the feeding our Facebook post. That's awesome. So very important. Uh, you know, if you want upfront, minute, you know, minute news and you know, and accurate then go to our Facebook. Second, <clears throat> we're in the process of revamping our uh, website. Okay. Uh, we've, uh, Rachel has completely revamped the, the look of our website, and hopefully it will be live sometime this week. This week. <clears throat> so just jonesboropolice.com, and you'll be able to go on and look at the new website. It's uh, easier to navigate around and, and go through. Uh, so new, fresh, new look, fresh content, and... Um, I think the public will be pleased with it. All right, so stay tuned for the upcoming website. Mm -hmm. I want to say good morning to Ms. Cora Evans and Mr. Mark Pillow, Ms. Cora Evans Hester. And Mark Pillow says, well, I guess he was responding to how you get your intel. He said leads. And then Mark Pillow says, <laughs> I don't know, but 1503 Arrowhead Farm Road doesn't seem to have noticed street crimes unit efforts yet. <laughs> okay, Mark. So I'm guessing he's giving y'all another lead. He gives another lead. <laughs> I, you know, <clears throat> we have, you know, X amount of resources. And, you know, when it takes people getting involved and people being concerned to pass this information along. So we take the information and as they can develop it, then, you know, we make the rest okay. from, from that once they get a case built. All right. All right, so we're going to go to another story. With it being, you know, all Gospel Wednesday, today focus on spirit and faith and all of that. Um, you know, your officers deal with a lot of heavy emotions, and they have sure. to rely on their faith to get them through some situations. And we're not going to go into details about this case. <sighs> It's, it's been enough discussion alone on Facebook right. because a video was released of a recent incident mm -hmm. officer involved shooting and I don't know if people understand the after effect the officers deal with whether the suspect was guilty or not no matter who's at fault or whatever the situation the officer that pulled the trigger has to deal with the fallout sure. of that of the outcome of whatever happened so Tell us about what your officers deal with. You know, what's their immediate emotions? What's the process to kind of get them back to, okay, i got to get back to work now, but I still have to process what just happened. Well, sure. It's a it's a tough process and a realization that, hey, you know, this just took place. And there are certain things that uh, start to unfold after that. You know, we put the officer on administrative leave while investigation was being conducted by the Arkansas State Police. And, and that is our standard protocol on officer-involved shootings. 
We always bring in Arkansas State Police to, to investigate. But during that time, <clears throat> you know, the officers, uh, we are we have a chaplain group within the police department. We have several uh, preachers in the community that serve as chaplains for the police department. So they're always there for our officers and giving uh, emotional and su spiritual support during these times. Of course, uh, other officers are also there for, you know, for that officer. And But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just tough on these officers. And But, you know, what folks don't realize day in and day out, the men and women of the police department, they see a lot of tragedy. I mean, you pull up on an accident scene and, you know, you, you, you've got maybe somebody that's, you know, severely injured or maybe even uh, killed in a motor vehicle accident. And, you know, sometimes it's a gruesome scene to have to deal with. And uh, for a brand new officer, it's kind of shocking to the senses to, you know, that you, you know, we have to work this, investigate it, and put the pieces to the puzzle together and you know, see what happened during the scene, you know, what caused it. And so it's, it, it weighs heavy on them. They, they have to live with this, you know, and deal with the tragedies. And the longer you're in this job, you know, you, you see a lot of unpleasant sights mm -hmm. that uh, would be very shocking to the, the general public. Yes, sir. You know, it's... Uh, you get into homicide scenes and suicide scenes and things like that. You know, those are very unpleasant circumstances that these officers are subjected to that have to go in and, and deal with and, and do an investigation on. Yes, sir. So while everyone may have their personal opinions concerning officers, I ask that you keep them lifted in prayer, you know, because they're dealing with things that we don't have to deal with on a daily basis. That's right. Uh, and, I, and again, the public just doesn't really realize what what these men and women face day in and day out. But, you know, there there is a lot of tragedy and there's a lot of good uh, also that, that comes out of it. But uh, it's the good things that uh, they do that we want to promote. Yes. And again, our way of doing it is just through social media. All right, and speaking of good things, we're going to go, I'm going to transition into a really feel-good story. All right. Um, recently, some officers were called over to an apartment complex, um, and again, you can find this story on the Jonesboro Police Department Facebook page, and the situation could have been tragic because we've seen this in the news before, where children are playing with toy guns, and the right. officer in the split second I had to make a decision and so all the times it doesn't end very well however in this case the officer took enough time to assess the situation and it ended up being a learning experience and an engaging experience for the right. children and the officer <clears throat> tell us about that sure there was a call uh, the call came out a man with a gun and uh, officers were were dispatched and uh, when they arrived uh, they found some young teens that were messing around with a, a handgun and of course the officers didn't realize you know didn't know if it's a real gun or bb gun or what but you know to them it, it looked real but fortunately the the teens complied with the officers and uh come to find out the reality was it was in fact a, a bb gun okay. but it looked like a real gun and that's that's kind of another problem but the officers took time to explain to them you know hey look <clears throat> you know we're glad that you complied when we got here. You know, if the consequences, if you didn't, it could have turned into tragedy. You know, if they'd have been waving the gun, uh, even inadvertently at the officers, you know, the, the, these young teens, you know, somebody could have been shot. And that would be a very tragic and unfortunate situation. But again, the officers assessed the situation and there wasn't a threat. And they, they got it dealt with and talked to the teens. And the, the teens understood. Okay. <clears throat> but uh, I guess some some point in time during the during the conversation the ice cream truck was coming through the neighborhood so the officers thought this is a good opportunity to buy, buy the kids some ice cream and continue their conversation That's really so awesome. again the officers kind of went above and beyond what they're required to do and spend a little bit more time with these kids and, and make a positive impact so i'm very proud of what these officers did on this day they you know went above and beyond but they, they made a, hopefully a positive impact with these kids, and hopefully that's something they will remember from, from here on. Yeah, so that, you know, we're here to protect you, not hurt you. 
So we definitely want to give a shout out, see if their names are listed. Well, it just says the Patrol and Street Crimes Unit. So it doesn't give the officers. <clears throat> oh, Officer Chambers, Tally, Thomas, and Gray. So let's give a shout out to them um, for you know taking the stance that they did and taking that opportunity to engage with these kids Absolutely. so great thing hopefully when these kids see them again they won't be so afraid and apprehensive they will engage with them more right. and you know maybe start really getting to know them so we hope so all right and so um there's a other uh, a lot of great stories on the facebook page as well there was one where corporal john wood was called to the scene of an accident and he took time to take care of the victim's pet while the victim had to go right. and get care. So just little stories, not little, stories like that right. <laughs> um, make <clears throat> a big difference because now this individual may have a different feeling toward the police than right. they may have had before. We don't know who they are and what they felt, but Correct. you know the fact that someone took care of their dog versus letting the dog just go to the animal um, uh, animal control yeah which would still they would still try to reunite the animal back with the the owner mm -hmm. so we, we use animal control as just this holding place till they can be reunited again this goes back to this is something the men and women of the police department have always done uh, these little acts of kindness this has gone on since I've been working here okay. you know going on 28 years these things always have taken place but the general public just don't see it mm -hmm. you know we, we have been on situations where the family didn't have diapers for the kids and officers or, or even food in the house and officers would take a collection up from the shift and, and go buy food and diapers to take to a family but that's things that never made it in a report or into the news media or anybody else it's just we, we would see that people get taken care of I know some people may feel, well, that's what they're supposed to do. But oftentimes, it helps the general, from my personal perspective, I think we need to see stories like this to help balance out the bad sometimes so that we know that police are human, they're that's people, right. and we <clears throat> need to show our appreciation. Right. Um, and that's why I brought back the, the Facebook deal and then have people tasked to updating, keeping keeping that going and putting these stories out there because like we said there there are many positive stories out there day in and day out that uh, you know in the past they've just gone unrecognized but through social media we can get those stories out there and we do want the public to see that you know what we do there is another aspect of policing you know other than just writing tickets that the that we deal with day in and day out and what better way to do it is through the social media and website all right. I want to say good morning to Mr. David Carnes, who says, good morning to Kelly K and Chief Rick Elliott. Always praying for officers and family. Quote of the day, great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role. It's always about the goal. Love our Jonesboro Police Department in our city. Well, thank you, Mr. Carnes. Yes, thank you, David. And <laughs> everyone else has chimed in and and especially Cora. Cora, you know, went through our CPA class and has been a strong alumni. And David also went through CPA and was one of my strong um, alumni members. So and we hope to see more and more. I know you have a CPA class. We do. We right have now. a current, uh, our ninth session is currently wow. taking place right now. We have about 25 in class. So uh, another great class uh, that's in progress. And for those that you have missed it this go around, we will be conducting another CPA class in the fall. We run two classes a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. So I'd like for you, you know, for you to get involved. We, we, we like community involvement and, you know, we want our classes to be as diverse as we can uh, because we learn from the people just as much as they learn from us. And again, we want, um the CPA classes and the police department to be diverse because like Chief and I were discussing when there is a representation of as much representation as possible of everyone that lives within a community the community itself can function better as a whole um, when people see people that look like them or come from their same background right. similar backgrounds um, they tend to gravitate toward them. They have more confidence sure. in the people that are serving them. So, yeah. well, it's, uh, you know, we we we've made a lot of progress uh, in, in the 
going on five years that I've been chief in, in our diversity, and I attribute a lot of it to this radio station Thank and you. the fact that, you know, coming on here and having this monthly conversation and, you know, and doing recruiting efforts through this radio station, uh, you know, we together in this partnership uh, have made the change and the look of the Jonesboro Police Department. So thank you and thank Laganzi for thank what y'all have done uh, in making the change in the PD. And that's what we're here for. We strive to be the com community's radio station and voice, a platform, a hub, so to speak. Absolutely. Well, that's what <laughs> this is what community involvement's all about. It is people getting together and working for the common goal. Uh, and when we do that, we have a much better community. That's right. All right, so we're going to get ready to come up on our break. So I don't want to get too deep into another topic right now. Right. But I do want to remind people that, you know, the weather is getting nicer. So different neighborhood cleanups are coming up. And so we're going to get into those dates and locations on the other side of our break. Um, there's also several events that are coming up, the Special Olympics and uh, Color Me Dare Color Run. So we'll definitely give you that information. Um, again, go to the Jonesboro Police Department's Facebook page to stay on top of what's happening with the police department. Um, drop them a note on one of their posts and say thank you or, you know, you appreciate them. Or if you have a tip, please, because there also are warrant watches um, warrant watch post on the Facebook page as well so if you have any information please don't forget don't feel reluctant to share um, this is your community you should want to keep it safe just like everybody else so. alright with that we're going to take a quick break you tune in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM and we'll be right back You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. How can you love that cranky, mean, and nasty person in your life? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. It's easy to love people who are lovable, but what about those who aren't? It's hard to hug prickly, porcupine people. But I've got some ways you can do it. First, hug the porcupine with your arms. This one's obvious. Sometimes a porcupine just needs your arms around them. Second, hug the porcupine with your hands. This is practical love. For example, if your spouse is overwhelmed, take the burden off them by cooking dinner and taking care of the kids on your own. Third, hug the porcupine with your words. Use words that build up, not tear down. For more ways to hug the porcupine in your life, visit my blog at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908.com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook. Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Support for KLEK is brought to you by One Saturday morning, some customer of ours was having coffee at the local convenience store. Another customer pulled in, pulled his golf cart behind him. He came in and said, I'm going to go play golf and relax. A farm customer of ours was sitting there and he said, I'm pulling my cart on my trailer today too, and I'm going to go relax this afternoon. Everyone looked outside. Don was pulling his backhoe behind his truck. Everyone had a good laugh. Glenn saying, God bless our troops. Centennial Bank, member FDIC, is a customer-focused bank that provides a broad range of commercial and retail banking and related financial services to businesses, investors, individuals, and municipalities. Centennial Bank has nine locations in Northeast Arkansas, 870-268-2300, www.my100bank.com.
The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to klekfm.org for more information. House of Details, located at 3915 East Highland in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, waxing, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more, with the motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details at 870-273-5187, House of Details on Facebook, and at klekfm.org. Hello, I'm Officer Victoria Evans. I have always had a desire to help others in need and to be an example and role model to young women by encouraging them to never give up on their dreams. My dream was to become a police officer and to serve my community. In 2016, that dream became a reality and it is the most rewarding experience of my life. Now I want to let you know about the same opportunity. The Jonesboro Police Department will conduct testing every month for patrol officers. Applications are available online at jonesboropolice.com or at the Police Department, 1001 South Caraway Work. The Jonesboro Police Department offers a competitive salary, health and retirement benefits, top-of-the-line training, and most importantly, the chance to make a difference in the Jonesboro community. Join me in making Jonesboro a better place. The Jonesboro Police Department is an equal opportunity employer, and women and minorities are especially encouraged to apply. More information is available at 870-935-5657. And now, back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guest today is Chief Rick Elliott from the Jonesboro Police Department. We have been talking about all things JPD and a few, you know, of the um, cases they've been, well, we can't talk about the case per se but everything that we've been talking about you can find on their facebook page um the street crimes unit again has been on the prowl you know making bus we want to thank them and thank all the other officers who are doing some other great and positive things around the city of jonesboro um again we talked uh, mentioned that there are some cleanup efforts coming up right um there are there is scenic hills association can you give us a I guess the general neighborhood where that is. Uh, Scenic Hills area is kind of area uh, west of G Street. Okay. And here the residential back through uh, that area. Uh, they have a cleanup schedule for May fourth, and the staging area for that will be at the Andy Camp Junior High. Okay. And um, Miss Judy Castile will be uh, coordinating the efforts on that cleanup uh, for that area. So if you live in that part of town, uh, if it, May 4th, there'll be a cleanup going on and uh, city trucks will be available. Uh, uh, if you need to dump, discard things that you have around the house or in the yard that you no longer need, we'll have dumpsters set up at any camp. Uh, otherwise, if you can get it to the curb on that day, uh, we'll have city trucks come by and get it to do a pickup. And this is, you know, the time of year to start cleaning up your yard, beautifying your neighborhood. <clears throat> um, let's make our community look great. Well, absolutely. You know, during the winter months, the, the city doesn't get a lot of attention. And the trash and litter, you know, it's it's kind of gotten out of hand at Jonesboro. So, you know, I've asked officers to step up enforcement on people that get caught littering. But uh, more important, you know, in your neighborhood, you know, take a little time. One, pick up your own your yard and then two take an extra go a little extra step and you know if, if a neighbor can't get out and there's trash in their yard you, you know give, give them a hand and you know our city streets need need some attention and some of these uh, ditches and things like that uh, you know get together with a group of folks and take a project and, and clean up because you know it's just promoting our city and we want our city to look good because every day we have a lot of visitors coming to Jonesboro and a lot of these people come to look at the town and to possibly take up residence here or put a business in here. So we want to make our city look beautiful and take care of it. All right. And then also we know we have a huge flooding area, a huge flooding issue in the city of Jonesboro. Right. A lot of the flooding could be eliminated, well, diminished, not eliminated, but diminished if we stop putting trash in the ditches. And sure. There's... 
a lot of people will take uh, grass clippings and things like that and dump them in the storm drains and they subsequently you know stop up the drains water backs up when we have heavy rains and that creates flooding issues so one it's illegal and two it does cause problems down the road so you know properly dispose of your yard waste and you know try to keep trash out of these ditches because um, it does ha cause problems I would love to start seeing more recycling um, efforts and different things and um, hopefully I can get my youth groups that I'm working with to come together and do a project over the summer. It won't be huge, but right. we'll put something together. Yeah. So. And we have, a, we have one, let me talk about another uh, cleanup that's scheduled also in yes. the month of May. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Coleman, uh, heading the Fisher Street uh, uh, Community and Action Group, uh, has got a clean cleanup scheduled on May 11th. Okay. And the staging area for that will be the uh, Fisher Street Church. And Dr. Charles Coleman be heading up this event, and um, he has scheduled uh, two more events after this. After this one, uh, for the north side of Jonesboro. So, again, we just want to make an impact in our community and give some folks a, a hand in, in cleaning up, you know, around their place. And this gives you an opportunity to get out, meet your neighbors, fellowship. Um, just get to know who lives around you so that you can start looking out for each other. Um, this helps you to also kind of be watch out for your neighborhood. Sure. If and you we, know who lives where, who resides in your area, if you see something suspicious, you know, you can make a phone call, you know who to contact. So, again, get out, clean up, fellowship. And yeah, we're working hand in hand. We have officers out, you know, out here working, volunteering their time. Uh, we'll have our CPA alumni, they're out here working hand in hand with the communities. Our quality of life the department within the city. Uh, it gives us an all chance to interact with, with each other. And, you know, around the noontime, we're going to cook some hamburgers and hot dogs uh, just to further along our fellowship during this time. So it's a great community effort and just want you to get involved in the, in your community that you live in. So this is one way of doing it, just uh, promoting uh, different events throughout the year. And in other ways that you can engage with officers coming up, um, this Friday, the Special Olympics, it says Area 7 Games, will be held at the Jonesboro High School. Again, Friday, April 5th, starts at 9 and m. So right. tell us a little bit more. Sure. Uh, our, our Special Olympics, uh, these special athletes, their, their big event is this Friday. Again, it's at the Jonesboro High School Stadium. And law enforcement uh, is always present and it is the law enforcement officers that present the medals to be special athletes after their their competition and uh, th this is the most rewarding day that you know that uh, that I do you, you go out there and you make an impact on this this person with special needs their life and you know you watch these individuals get out and participate in the in the games and um, you know that some may have disabilities but you know what they they've overcome them and um, and it's it, it's just a, a great experience and we're so proud to, to support this you know across the country law enforcement is always been supporting Special Olympics and throughout the year officers of the department Jonesville Police Department and local law enforcement agencies uh, do different fundraising events okay. for our Area 7 Special Olympic athletes. It takes, you know, money to transport these athletes to different events. Uh, not all events are here in Jonesboro. They have to go to other oh. places, too, to participate sometimes, leading up to the big event. So they, they have to have fundraisers. And uh, we have tip -a cop Night. Uh, recently we had one at Colton's. Okay. Um, so the restaurant gave a percentage of the, the sales back to Special Olympics. So the officers volunteered their time and went out and uh, served as waiters and waitresses that night, uh, you know, to help fundraise for Special okay. Olympics. So again, there's other things that uh, they do uh, throughout the year to fundraise for Special Olympics. And if you see these opportunities come up, we'd just like for you to get out and, and participate and, and, you know, nothing else just go eat at that restaurant if that night we're doing something and you know that is one way of showing your support that's awesome 
All right, so shout out to those officers that are involved. And please consider going out Jonesboro High School, 9 o'clock a.m. and support the Special Olympics. Also this month, um, on April 20th, which is a Saturday, starting at 9 a.m., is Color Me Dare. This is hosted by the Dare Program. Right. And so they do a lot of wonderful work in the uh, schools, um, working with the elementary students, right. teaching them about drugs and various other topics. And so this is headed up by Officer Seaborn and Sergeant Racy. Sergeant Shea Racy. It's still a part of until you right. get his replacement in to there. The, so. Yeah, to the end of the school year. <laughs> All uh, right. Anthony Zaffirano, Tony Zaffirano, will be the new DARE officer that will okay. take in uh, Shea's spot. Uh, uh, Tony will take over Shea's spot in the fall session. Okay. But uh, right now he's kind of transitioning into the, the DARE program with uh, Shea and Jamie to finish out the year and start on these projects. Right. But again, this is a great event coming up and it's a messy event, but uh, <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> it is fun. You know, you get out and watch uh, the, the kids and adults uh, do this fun run and uh, they get this colored powder thrown on them and time the event's over with, it's, uh, it's very colorful. <laughs> And, so do you uh, ever get out there and get thrown? Get no, thrown? I, I, oh, I get some of the residual effect from uh, from it. Uh, usually I just go out and help cook uh, hamburgers and hot dogs. But uh, that's that's kind of my part of it. Oh, goodness. And you can find this event um, linked to the Jonesboro Police Department's Facebook page. Click on the link and it has all the registration information because you do need to register. There is a fee attached and the money that's raised goes back into the program to help provide supplies for the kids. So again, it's adults 25, kids 12 and under 15, a family of five for 60. It's a two mile color run. Be creative, dress up, have fun. And there's going to be all some other activities before the run and after. So again, go to the Facebook page, click on the link for the event, and then find the registration information and register your family. And then there's some other contact information. Pre-registration deadline is April the 9th, which is next week. Uh, and so you also get a free t-shirt for those that register. So That's right. Great so, event, and we'd appreciate your support. All right, so let's get into, there's a story. One of, this is another, you know, shout out to the officer's story. <clears throat> a, a young girl, seven years old, was missing, but she was found very quickly thanks to the efforts of the community and the officers. So can you tell us just yeah. a little bit? This was uh, just last night. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was a young girl in the South Jonesboro uh, area that uh, th that has some emotional issues that she, she's dealing with and she has a tendency just to, to walk away from the house and this is like the third time that oh, she wow. has done so and uh, we once we got the call and got officers there uh, due to the area that uh, you know potentially need to be searched we brought in numerous off-duty officers okay. and then we had uh, officers from the Cricket County Sheriff's Department, the Arkansas State Police, Arkansas Game and Fish, uh, even some officers from Truman PD came up to help coordinate and, and get together and start searching for this child. And uh, fortunately, uh, a resident in South Jonesboro saw her playing in a pasture and called police and um, so we had had a happy ending the child was located safe and sound but you know she had walked uh, through the woods the wooded area you know close to three miles from her house really just yeah walking, just, just, kinda... just walking and playing and so you know it had a happy ending but it certainly could have turned into tragedy because you know by cutting through staying in the woods you know people are not seeing her so therefore they couldn't report it and the last time she did this and just been a few months ago uh, she was for the most part staying on the streets and people were calling in and, okay. re and reporting it so we we had a quick better quicker response in locating her that time okay. so yeah it, it ended well last night but the fact that uh, in our area we have a, a 
called a CART team, C-A-R-T, and it's okay. Child Abduction Response Team. And basically, it's officers from multiple agencies that we have trained uh, working together if there was a some kind of child abduction. So in this case, there wasn't a, an abduction, but the fact that there was a missing child, we brought everybody together, and we already knew what each agency's capabilities were okay. and what resources to tap into. So with this quick response, um, things came together very quickly. We were able to deploy officers in certain areas very quickly. So if it wasn't for this pre-training and pre-meeting kind of stuff, you know, we wouldn't have been as efficient as we were last night. Well, definitely give so, a shout out to all the parties involved. Absolutely. Again, um, <laughs> in fact, we even had the, the fire department down there. They, they sent uh, a couple trucks and the battalion chief, uh, you know, uh, just and looking. So, you know, in time of need like this, you know, there are resources that will come in. Uh, even we had our CPA alumni responding to the area uh, to help out also. So, you know, shout out to, to the men and women of the alumni that uh, gave up their evening to come out and help look for a lost child. And then uh, once the, the plea went out to the community that, hey, we got a missing child, we had several civilians to call and, and show up and like what, what can we do so again that's just showing how our community can come together in a short amount of time to to do good things Amazing. so just to want to say thank you to everyone involved last night for your involvement your participation and br bringing this child home safely all right we have a few more facebook comments mr david Carnes says great community support last night very proud of everyone involved in the search effort and Miss Melissa Thornley Elliott says, God bless the peacemakers. Thank you for that. All right. That's, that's, that's my wife, Melissa. Hi, hi yeah. Miss Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I want to um, highlight another event, another thing that you did um, last Friday. Well, several things. You've spoken with the Rotary Club. Right. Um, then last week you spoke um, at the 2019 Leadership Jonesboro. So tell us a little bit more about um, your topic or what you talked about your address to the group to the rotary group well or leadership the leadership jonesboro. <laughs> leadership jonesboro yeah uh, leadership jonesboro is a project uh, hosted by the chamber of commerce they put on a i guess like a school and they bring different people from the community and have have various classes and last week uh, my they assembled at the city hall and we we're talking about city government okay so I just came in and gave an hour overview of the police department and what we do, how we do it, why we do it, and, okay. and just the, you know, what it takes to run a police department and, you know, things like that. So just a, just an overview. And, okay. of course, the fire chief came in behind me, did the same thing, and then the mayor was in and talked about, you know, what's it like being the mayor and running the city. Okay. So uh, just that was their day uh, for that particular day of training with city government. I think conversations like this are needed continuously so that people get to know who's in what position, who's serving them, and who they can turn to if they have any sure. questions or issues. Um, we need to know who's running our city. Right. You know, people don't realize what what all is involved in running a city. Uh, you know, we have over 20 department heads that are responsible for various departments throughout the city, and you know, every Monday morning we have a department head meeting with okay. the mayor. And uh, we have a, a list of everything that's going on in the city project-wise, and we discuss and update with the mayor, you know, these changes from week to week. So it gives the mayor a quick overview of what's going on in the city at a quick glance and, and just a chance to sit down with that department director and kind of get a weekly briefing and update what's going on. And, of course, we're all listening to the other departments, so I being made aware of what's going on in engineering and streets and things like that. So okay. it's just keeping the city working together and Mayor Perrin has done an outstanding job in keeping our uh, city working together and, and being very efficient in what we do. All right. And so another thing I want to highlight before we get ready to go to break, um, we're, we've are we been talking about this, I know, for the past two years <laughs> or however long you've been coming on. People lock your car doors. People take your stuff in the house. I'm, we're still seeing videos. Yeah. Luckily, now more residents are getting video cameras mm -hmm. um, that are you know pointed toward their vehicle, so you get to actually see 
what's happening when more people are reporting break-ins or attempted break-ins right. into their vehicles and we cannot stress enough lock your car please <laughs> lock your car <laughs> Regardless where you live in Jonesboro, please lock your car and do not leave your valuables, you know, in the car. Like, I'm looking at this video and, you know, you can see the person just calmly walking around, you know, checking for unlocked doors. Unlocked doors. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, for the most part, they're not knocking the glass out because there's plenty of cars that are left unlocked. So they open the door and they're finding purses, guns, computers, and, you know, things of value and they, they walk away you know, without ever breaking a window. And, you know, the, the, the part that's troublesome to me is, you know, if you're a person that carries a gun and you leave a gun in an unlocked vehicle, you know, there's a possibility that one of my officers may end up facing that gun some night when they encountered this individual. And, uh, you know, it, I would hate to think that, you know, we, we have to have this kind of encounter because somebody was irresponsible and, uh, you know, didn't secure their weapon. So, you know, please lock your vehicle and uh, secure your valuables and and weapons um, and be responsible. And then based on, you know, these videos that I'm seeing, and you can see all of this on the Jonesboro Police Department Facebook page. These people just casually walking down the street, walking up into people's driveways. And one person actually got into a vehicle. Right. And... It's just that simple. So it's please. pretty simple. But, you know, the good thing is, uh, as we've talked about, we've taken these pictures that people are giving us from their, their video, their home videos, and we're posting them on Facebook. And guess what? We're having great results in getting okay. uh, people identified and prosecuting these cases. So shout out to the folks that have got security systems and video cameras and things like that done the right thing and getting that information to us we're having better success in prosecution hopefully more people will start investing in them as they become a little bit more affordable a simple plug and play right. kind of deal so anyway we're going to take another quick break and come back we're wrapping up our discussion you're tuning into community conversations on klek 102.5 fm You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. For many of us, our cash flow issues are not because we're overspending, but because we are too lax about allowing other people to spend our money. Track your spending for a month and put a special focus on money you're spending to provide for the wants and needs of others. In other words, buying things they should do without or provide for themselves. For example, check for unnecessary spending on minor children. Food, water, clothing, shelter, and related utilities, these are the basics you should be spending your money on. Also check for lending to and spending on people, especially friends and relatives who think you just have it like that. The bottom line, no one has the right to spend your money. Don't allow others to drain income from you out of guilt to prove your friendship or as a show of love. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation foundation at gmail.com. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Hello everyone, this is Brother Carlos of KLEK 102.5 FM. We are seeking 100 donors to give at least $20 per month. But we are happy with any gift, large or small. Come by our studio at 1411 Franklin Street in Jonesboro. Call us at 870 
402-771-0080. Or you can visit our website at klekfm.org. Or you can use the cash app, dollar sign, klekfm, or text klek1 and send it to 44321. This is Brother Carl Victor Praise Gospel and all Gospel Wednesday. So please, all my listeners, let's donate. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. The Office of Diversity and Community Engagement at Arkansas State University, under the leadership of Dr. Maurice Gibson, is a proud supporter of KLEK and is dedicated to finding innovative ways to advance their mission of creating a diverse and inclusive environment, conducive to educating, enhancing, and enriching lives, uplifting various and diverse groups, on the A-State campus and striving to maintain Arkansas State University, a place that is inclusive to all individuals, regardless of origin, color, religion, socioeconomic status, or sexual orientation. More information about the Arkansas State University Office of Diversity and Community Engagement is available at www.astate.edu forward slash diversity and 870-972-3081. Anointed Pro Lube, 1216 East Johnson Avenue, serves the Jonesboro community inspired by Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. They offer brake service, oil changes, tire plugs, basic tune-ups, wiper blade changes, bulb changes, and coolant system flushes. Open Monday, Thursday, and Friday, 8 to 5, Tuesday and Wednesday, 8 to 4, and Saturday, 8 to 2. More information, 870-520-5039. Now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Again, my special guest today is Chief Rick Elliott from the Jonesboro Police Department. And I hope that you have been enjoying this conversation and and have taken something away from it. I hope that you are being more mindful of your surroundings, your vehicles, your home, Um, Get to know your neighbors. We cannot stress that enough. If we start looking out for each other, we can build a better community. Um, I'm going to take a page from, no, can't say the KIT. I'm not going to use their plug. We'll make this a better community. I don't want them to sue us for for liability. (laughs) All right. So in this last segment, Chief, are there any uh, things that you would like to? Oh, I do want to mention real quick about the K-9 unit, how they have... You know, we've talked about this before. They've received this now. Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, Gabo, Officer Gabo, Gabo, you know, suffered an injury on the job. And so, but because of that, it has raised awareness. Right. And now the other canines are taken care of. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's a company called Vested Interest that has provided ballistic protection for our canine unit, uh, which is seven dogs. And uh, all of our dogs now have a ballistic uh, vest, uh, so which is, a, is is good because the the night that Gabo uh, got shot, um, that was the only he was the only dog that had a vest, and uh, this company had previously donated this vest to Gabo, uh, you know, a year before this incident took place. But since then, the, the company Vested Interest has provided our dogs with vests, and, but more important, they also offset the medical expenses of uh, Gobble's uh, vet bills after he was shot. So there was uh, around $8,000 worth of uh, medical expenses that they also paid for. Okay. And this is a nonprofit organization? It is a nonprofit organization uh, that's up, up north. But again, they, they have done the same for uh, other canines in, in our area. Uh, they're providing some ballistic vests uh, to them also. So you'll see that Truman and some other areas that have canine units 
we've also been awarded VEST through this uh, grant program. That's amazing. Well, let me give a shout out to them for taking care of our canine officers because they work hard um, assisting the officers um, on the job. They help sniff out things that our human noses can't right. yeah, sniff out and they go into places that we can't right. well that we the officers can't right. um so they are great they are of great service to the yeah, they're, they're a huge department. asset to the police department <laughs> and that's why i have the number of dogs that we have because uh years ago when i was over the canine unit before i got promoted to chief i realized that this is a huge asset to the police department and i expanded the unit back then up to seven because uh, just the benefit that they can provide that's awesome and so they're not just pets, even though I would love to pet them all. <laughs> they're not just pets. They are hardworking canine they officers. I um, want to give a shout out real quick to the SWAT team um, officers um, for cons keeping up on their physical fitness. Um, you all, once an officer, you know, gets trained, they're inducted, what, whatever the process, they're sworn in, it's, it's not over there. They continue with their right. physical agility test, physical fitness, they continue with other trainings throughout the year um, to make sure that they are on top of their game so they can provide the best service to the sure. community. Yeah, it's, uh, we encourage officers to, you know, maintain a healthy lifestyle the best they can, you know. The, the daily stresses of the job, sometimes lunch or dinner may be a quick drive through somewhere and grab something, eat on the run. Uh, they don't get a chance a lot of times to get out and, and take a break. But uh, a lot of it's fast food, and uh, so that you know can lead to being overweight sometimes. But we do en encourage that, and on our SWAT team, we hold them to a higher standard, and uh, because of the demands of that job and that function. So you know, once a year they go through a physical, or twice a year they go through a physical fitness uh, evaluation process, and then they go through uh, intense monthly training on uh, their tactics. Because they all, they have to carry a different type of gear. Sure, they're they're carrying a lot of weight on them, and uh, so they have to be physically fit to, to do that. All right. So in our last two minutes, um, any final words, shout outs, um, encouragements? Now again, just I'd like to thank everybody for last night for uh, participating in locating this young girl. Uh, everybody involved in the community came together real quick like and just thank you the community as a whole for your su continued support of the Jonesboro Police Department. Uh, we are very blessed by our community and we do have great support and I certainly appreciate what each and every one of you have done for the PD. We are here to protect you day in and day out and we're, it's our pleasure to serve you and uh, take care of you. All right, don't forget the Business Expo. Business Expo is today. Uh, be open from 1 to 4 to the public, so if you don't have anything on your agenda this afternoon, come out and uh, see us at the Business Expo. Expo. The police department does have a booth set up, and I'll be there from 1 to 4. I okay. look forward to seeing you and visiting with you. So go out there, take some pictures, and go see the K-9 and the different um, individuals from the different units. So get to know who serves you in your community, who's protecting and serving you in your community. <laughs> and snap some pictures, and all right, and go see all the other businesses out there, the Business right. Expo. All right, so we thank you, Chief, for joining us. We can't thank you enough, and thank the officers enough for the work that they do for the city. Um, again, every first Wednesday of the month, you can catch Chief Rick Elliott here. Now, will you become a regular on our Bible study every first Wednesday? Too? I think uh, Dr. Oden and I have scheduled this just part of it now. All so. right, so every first <laughs> Wednesday, you get Chief for Bible study and Chief for community conversations. We can't thank you, and thank you to all of the officers. And don't forget, uh, Special Olympics this Friday, 9 a.m., Jonesboro High School, Color Me Dare, Color Run, April 20th. 9 a.m. Joe Mac Campbell Park, uh, Scenic Hills Association Cleanup May 4th, Fisher Street Community in Action Cleanup May 11th, and we'll continue to give you that information as it uh, gets closer to those days. Thank you so very. You're much, welcome. Chief and Elliot. if you forget those days, go to our Facebook, and everything will be there for you. And stay on the lookout for JonesforPolice.com website coming up very soon, sometime this week. Hope everyone has a great and blessed day. Enjoy the rest of the gospel hits, all gospel. Thank Wednesday. you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. 
a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 